FAQ number 73, is it okay for a Christian to play the lottery? No. I'll tell you why. Turning your Bible to Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs 13 verse 11. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 11 says, Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. Is it vanity to go in and buy a lottery ticket? Yes. And if you get your wealth by that, it's going to be diminished. And it's funny, if you ever want to do an interesting study, look at people that win the lottery. Look into those people that win lots and lots and lots of money. It will be diminished. I can remember there was actually the road where I grew up, Peach Lane, went up to White Oak Road, and then you went, if you're going, uh, I'm not sure if that would be north, um, but if you're going away from Peach Lane on White Oak Road, there was a, a house that was a beautiful place, I mean, really, really well taken care of, and these people from New York uh, actually had won the lottery, and this house was for sale, and they came down and uh, bought this house. They won, you know, a million dollars or something like this. I don't even know how much. And they bought this beautiful home. I mean, it's wooded acreage and everything else. Just immaculate home. Really, really nice. And these people moved in there and, you know, they just, they destroyed the place. I mean, it just, it's sloppy. And, I mean, we, we, used, to, we ca used to call it tarp paradise because there were so many things in the, in the yard just with tarps over top of them. I mean, it was just like blue and green tarps everywhere through the yard. And I mean, they just would buy things, you know, the stuff you drive by and you'd go, what, is, what are these people even thinking? I mean, they'd have a, they'd buy a boat and then they'd buy a brand new truck and then they'd buy ATVs. And then they, and I remember the one time they had a donkey in the backyard and this, this donkey went out and he like ate the bark off of this big old tree and, you know, and, and barked this tree around in a circle. If you ever want to kill a tree, cut all the bark off in a circle. You know, I'm not saying to do that, but that's the way you kill trees. Okay. If they don't, if they have all the bark removed in a circle, it'll kill the tree, because that's the bark, the cambium layers, how the, you know, the liquid basically goes up through, and so you take all the bark off in a ring, the tree can't get the liquid up through, it kills the tree. So they got this huge tree right behind the house, and the thing's dead because this donkey in the backyard ate the bark off. I mean, <laughs> like, and what happened? Well, they took their millions and millions of dollars, however much they had, they bought the house, and then they bought all this other junk, and before long they were poor again. And that thing happens over and over and over again. This is not the method for a Christian, okay? Getting your wealth through going out and spending, I'll spend $5 and come back with $50 million. That's not of the Lord. And if you want a New Testament reference to this whole thing, and I've talked about this verse plenty of times, but uh, turn to Second Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some, among, or some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. Okay, you're supposed to work. You're supposed to be active. You're supposed to be physically active. I mean, it's not even good for your health to not work and to not be physical. That's why I'm really trying this year to, to do more physical labor outside. So there's, you know, the timing of the sermons coming out and videos coming out might be might be a couple weeks sometimes where we don't have anything and then you get a week where there's a whole bunch of videos because, you know, we're going to space out our work more. But the point is, you're supposed to work and labor for things, you know, and it's a it's a whole different philosophy too when you go into this thing. Uh, if you win $50 million, what are you going to do? You're going to go out and, and just blow it on a bunch of stuff. And you say, but I need these things. Okay, maybe you do need a new house, or maybe you do need a more reliable vehicle than what you have or whatever else. But if you go out there and you get that, are you, are you really going to appreciate it, knowing you didn't work for it? See? It's a whole different philosophy. You know, uh, when I walk around here and things, I look and I say, okay, I remember, you know, working for this and working for that. I, I mean, I, I still have clothing that's uh, probably 15, 20 year old clothing, you know, that I had to work for jobs years ago and stuff and, and things that I bought over the years because I labored for it.
But how would it be to walk through a place and say, all this is mine because I paid five bucks for a little piece of paper and I scratched some things off and I won millions of dollars. It's not the, the thing that a Christian should be doing. So should a Christian play the lottery? No. And also that goes for gambling as well because lottery is just gambling. Okay. Uh, you're not supposed to gain your wealth by vanity. Okay. You're supposed to labor working with your hands for what you have.